was a Sunday. We took her to the emergency room and she was losing feeling in her left leg and her left arm. The doctor in the emergency room stuck pins in her leg and in her arm. And she had no feeling there and he said he suspected a brain tumor and called a neurosurgeon. The neurosurgeon came in and Sunday evening he cut the tumor out. He told us after the biopsy, the glioblastoma grade four, he told us that had we not gotten her to the emergency room, within 24 hours she would have been dead because the grade four doubles in size every few hours and which is okay when it's going from one cell to two or two to four but when it's the size of a golf ball or a tennis ball and it's going to double in a few hours in no time at all you have terrible pressures on the brain and it makes a person uh, unconscious to dead but as soon as you remove the tumor, the pressure's gone off the brain. She was feeling great. Everything's back to normal. Everything's fine. But the doctor said, because it's a glioblastoma grade four, she had three to four months to live in May of 97. They could lengthen that with radiation. So, we went ahead with the, with the radiation at the time. And that summer of 97, she had the full course of conventional radiation. The, the tumor had returned, but this had kept it within a reasonable size, reasonable to the doctors, so that they said she would be a candidate for uh, gamma knife surgery, the stereotactic radiation, which is a a whole collection of low-level radiation sources that each can be individually focused to a spot. And they did this. Six months after that was done, the doctor told us that this tumor has come back with a vengeance. We have to do a second surgery. And the surgeon that did that said the tumor was at several locations. He said, I'll take an MRI of the brain and this will be our point of departure from this time on. That's the MRI that I sent off with our application to the Brzezinski Clinic and Dr. Brzezinski could let her into the clinical trial. We were there uh, for a full month and it was Labor Day that we got ready to return to uh, Los Angeles and this is the Labor Day weekend that I tell you she began to have a loss of motor skill as she was walking through the airport dragging a foot and being unsteady and so forth that's the ataxia now I'd, I'd like to make sure that you understand that Susan's loss of motor skill so far as I've been told by three or four doctors that it was a consequence of her radiation. Complete everything, both sides, not, a, not a, a problem with part of the brain or anything. It was just a total lack of control of all voluntary muscles that uh, is pretty tremendous when you stop and think about it because it leaves you with a heartbeat, it leaves you with respiration, it leads you it leaves you with digestion uh, and very little else. She couldn't talk, she couldn't swallow without choking, and no sense of balance. When she would stand, she would just if she started to fall, she didn't realize it, she would just go like a tree. Ataxia is a, a common happening about a year after you complete a course mm -hmm. of conventional radiation. And in this case, it was almost to the day. Bang. And by the time we actually got on the ground in Los Angeles, we had to get her off the plane with a wheelchair gone.
On May 4, 1997, Susan Hale was admitted into the Torrance Memorial Medical Center in California, where the pathology department performed a biopsy, where they diagnosed her with a glioblastoma multiform grade 4 astrocytoma. After two surgeries and two full courses of radiation failed to eliminate Susan's tumor, in August of 1998, she was admitted into one of Dr. Brzezinski's clinical trials. Here is the July 30th, 1998 MRI showing the size of the enhancing portion of Susan Hale's tumor. On August 10th, 1998, Susan Hale began antineoplaston treatment. On August 22nd, only 12 days after starting treatment, her tumor had shrunk by over 50%. By October, it had shrunk another 69%. By December 1998, only four months after starting antineoplaston treatment, her tumor was gone. Susan Hale's tumor remains non-existent and was considered resolved in July of 2001. Her complete response was confirmed by follow-up MRIs, with the most recent MRI being February 6, 2009, which showed no changes to suggest the presence of any recurrence of her tumor 11 years later. You need a monitoring position here at home, where, wherever a patient who's outside of Texas resides, they have to have a monitoring position at the time it was to protect Dr. Brzezinski from being accused of practicing medicine across the state line. So you have to have a monitoring position. In between visits to Brzezinski, you'd have to go to Dr. Brzezinski's clinic, you'd have to go to the monitoring position, he would look at the catheter, make sure there was no infection, make sure your blood work was all right because you're flushing all this saline solution and anti-neoplastin through you, so on and so forth. So to, it's up to the patient to get a monitoring position, part of the application requirements. So we interviewed 30 to 40 doctors all over the South Bay area of Los Angeles in order to try to find one and invariably they would tell us they don't want to be associated with him or anywhere from no thanks to he's a crook and a quack and so forth. One doctor told Susan, if you were my sister and you wanted to go to Dr. Brzezinski clinic, I would stand on the runway in front of the airplane to keep you from flying to Houston. He got a little dramatic about it. Later on, he's the doctor who told us that, well, if you can't find anybody, I'll do it. But he didn't sign the paper. So I, I left the paper with his office and I got, and we got an airplane and went to Houston. So then I called him from Houston and asked him about the faxing me the paper. Well. Finally, the nurse got on the phone and said, he doesn't want to do it. So we were stuck in Houston for an extra two weeks while we tried to get a monitoring position because Dr. Brzezinski couldn't let us return here until we had a monitoring position. By this time, I'm trying to interview doctors over the phone from Houston to be a monitoring position while we're living in a hotel. I got pretty thoroughly annoyed with some of these doctors who would tell me that the reason they didn't want to be associated with being a monitoring position for Dr. Brzezinski is because he's a crook, a quack, a charlatan, he's never really cured anybody. And I would ask them, how do you know this? Well. It's just what I've heard. So I would say to them, by this time I'm getting my dander up, I guess, but I would say to them, if you think you're a scientist, how can you go based on just what you've heard? And, of course, that was the end of the interview.